Okay, in today's video, we're going to play one of my favorite physics games, and that is Will It Accelerate? And this is today's situation. We have object M1. Object M1 is sitting on the table. There is no friction between object M1 and the table. Object M1 is attached to the string. The string goes right over the pulley, hangs off the pulley. And at the other end of the string, we have object M2. And we would like to know, are these two objects going to accelerate? Now, in two previous videos, which you can link to right here, I showed you actually how to, using Newton's second law, to calculate the acceleration of these two objects. But in today's video, we're going to take a little more conceptual look at why these two objects either will or will not accelerate. So let's get started. We have M2, the string, the pulley, the string, and M1, the table, no friction. No friction. Now, from previous experience, from things you've seen in your real life, and possibly even from a little common sense, you should know that if these two objects are set up in this situation, and there's no friction between M1 and the table, that when the objects are released, that M1 is definitely going to accelerate to the right, M2 is definitely going to accelerate down. Why will those two objects definitely accelerate? That is because there is an unbalanced force acting on those two objects. Unbalanced forces cause acceleration. Acceleration is caused by unbalanced forces. Well, if they're definitely going to accelerate and there is an unbalanced force, where does that unbalanced force come from? Let's see if we can figure that out. The first thing we should do is draw in all the forces that are acting on M1 and all the forces that are acting on M2. These are the three forces that are acting on object M1. There's the weight, there's the normal force from the table, and there's the tension force from the string. Now, a lot of people think, well, if there's a down force and an up force, then and there's a right force, there must be a force to the left. There does not have to be a force to the left, even though there's a force to the right. And because there's no friction, there is no force to the left. M1 is just going to move to the right without a friction force. The forces that are acting on M2, there's the weight and there's a tension force. Just those two forces. Now you can see on these two objects, we have those five forces are acting on those two objects. Now, where does that unbalanced force come from? Because we said these two objects are going to accelerate. We're going to, in a sense, sum up the forces that affect the acceleration because some of these forces we can kind of ignore because they don't affect the acceleration. And two of those forces are the normal force and the weight of M1. M1 is going to move to the right. These two forces are acting along the y-axis and therefore they do not affect the acceleration. So therefore we can, in a sense, ignore those two forces. Now we have the tension force, and you might be thinking, well, there's the object one is moved to the right, there's the tension force also to the right, so that is an important force for the acceleration. Well, that ain't important because we also have this tension force, and because, thank you to Newton's third law, these two forces are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction, so they cancel each other out in a sense, and therefore we can ignore those two forces. That means of all five forces acting on both of those objects, we only have one force left, M2G. That's the only force of those five that affects the motion of those two objects. We have a single force pulling M2 down, pulling M1 to the right, a single force. A single force is an unbalanced force. It's going to give us an unbalanced net force. And therefore, yes, as we said, those two objects will accelerate due to that unbalanced force from M to G. Okay? Now, let's look at the same situation, but let's add friction. If we add friction, now there's really two possibilities. Yes, M1 could accelerate to the right, and M1 could accelerate down. Excuse me, M1 to the right, M2 down. But if there's enough friction between M1 and the table, then the objects will not move at all. Let's see if we can figure out if these objects are going to accelerate, or really when these objects would accelerate, <coughs> excuse me, and when they would not accelerate. 
once again, if they're going to accelerate, we're going to have to have an unbalanced force. So let's draw in all the forces. The forces acting on M1 are these four. There's the weight, the normal force, the tension force again. And once again, because we have friction, we have the friction force acting to the left. Friction force would act to the left in this case because if these two objects would accelerate, M1 would move to the right. Friction opposes motion, so friction would be to the uh, left. Let's draw the forces for F2, excuse me, F2, M2. And for M2, we just have the same two forces, the weight and the tension force. Now, once again, let's kind of sum up the forces or see which forces of all six are important in the acceleration of these two objects. M1 would move to the right if it was to accelerate. These two forces, the normal force and the weight, are again in the y direction. So we would, in a sense, ignore those two forces. Now, the tension forces are the same thing. In elastic string, these two forces are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction, so therefore we would ignore the tension forces. Now, you can see we have two forces left. One force, M2G, pulls down, or to the right, so to speak, and the other force, the friction force, pulls in the opposite direction. So there's really this tug of war, so to speak, going on between M2G and the friction force. If M2G is greater than the maximum possible friction force, if M2G is greater, then yes, these two objects will accelerate. M1 to the right, M2 down. If M2G is greater than the friction force. If the friction force is greater, then the objects just won't move at all, okay? Let's look at a couple examples and see when the friction force might be greater or when the weight of M2 might be greater and these two objects would accelerate. In the first situation, we have the mass of M1 is 6, M2 is 2 kilograms. The coefficient of static friction is 0 0.45. When you figure these problems out, when you work on these problems, you have to use the coefficient of static friction, which is greater than the coefficient of kinetic friction. And if you calculate the friction force with the static friction, the static coefficient, then you get the maximum possible friction force. And that's what we want. And then we have G, and we're going to round G to 10 to make the math just a little bit easier. Let's calculate M2G. Well, M2G is just M2 times G. That's 20. The friction force, as you know, is mu times the normal force. Well, the normal force is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to M1G, so we can just use the coefficient of static friction times M1G. All right? And once again, we're using the coefficient of static friction. That will give us the maximum possible friction force. If we do that, it's 0 0.45 times 6 times 10, and you get the maximum friction force possible is 27 newtons. Well, you'll notice M2G is 20. That has not exceeded the maximum possible friction force. And therefore, in this case, these two objects will not accelerate, and they're just not going to move. And you can kind of think of it, there's enough friction to hold M1 right there. Let's look at another example. Now in this example, all I did was I decreased the mass of M1 to 4 kilograms. Left the coefficient of friction the same, left M2 the same, and left G. I'm not going to change G, but G is obviously still 10. Okay, now let's calculate M2G again. M2G is still 20. Now in this case, we kept the coefficient of friction the same, but we decrease the mass of M1, and therefore when we calculate the maximum possible friction force, we get 18 newtons. The maximum possible is less than the force pulling on it from M2G, and therefore, yes, in this case, these two objects will accelerate. Now I changed, in this second example, I changed the mass of M1. I could have changed the coefficient of friction. I could have changed the mass of M2 or all three just to get the situation to work out. But the important point is, if M2G is greater, the two objects will accelerate. And of all six of those forces, it's really just a tug of war between M2G pulling 
in one direction and the friction force pulling in the opposite direction. Okay? So there you go. That's why things will or will not accelerate with and without friction. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it interesting, helpful, and informative. If you did, please subscribe to my channel and then give me a thumbs up. And then, if you're so inclined, also leave me a nice comment. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you in the next video.